So in this video, we'll look at the last part of number one from the 2013 AB and BC AP exam. And in this question, we had the rate at which gravel was arriving at a plant to be processed. We know that the gravel was being processed at the rate of 100 tons per hour. And we know how much gravel was unprocessed at the beginning of the workday, and that was at 500 tons of unprocessed gravel. In part D here, it says, what's the maximum amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant during the hours of operation on this workday? Justify your answer. Well, it wants the maximum amount of something. It wants the absolute maximum. And anytime we're looking for the absolute maximum of a function that should be continuous, and if you think about it, the function that represents the amount of unprocessed gravel, it is going to be continuous. We're not going to have any drastic jumps or asymptotes on that graph. It's always going to be rising and falling. It's always going to be defined. So the function that represents the amount of unprocessed gravel will be continuous. And if we're looking for an absolute maximum for a function on a closed interval, and we are looking for it on a closed interval, the workday goes from t equals 0 to t equals 8, we have to consider the endpoints of the interval as possibilities for the absolute max. Maybe the most gravel was on the plant at the beginning of the workday, maybe it was the end of the workday, then again maybe it was sometime between t equals 0 and t equals 8. The other values that we're going to have to consider are places where the derivative of the function that represents the amount of unprocessed gravel is equal to zero. Now in part C, in the previous video, I defined this net rate function. The net rate of change of the amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant is given by g of t, the rate at which it arrives, minus 100, the rate at which it's processed. Now the derivative of the amount of unprocessed gravel would actually correspond to the rate of change of the unprocessed gravel. This would be the rate of change of the unprocessed gravel on the plant. When is this rate of change equal to zero? Well, what I've done is I've graphed g of t on my calculator and I've graphed uh, y equals 100 on my calculator. I want to figure out when those rates are equal to each other because whenever this is equal to zero, when n of t equals zero, that's a place where the derivative of the function representing the amount of unprocessed gravel on the plant, that's a place where that derivative is equal to zero. And so I can set this g of t equal to 100, right? I can add 100 to this side, and n of t is going to be zero if g of t equals 100. Well, if this is a calculator problem like it is, you can figure out the solution to that pretty quickly uh, by finding the intersection of g of t and y equals 100. And so if I find the intersection graphically, what I end up with is I end up with the t value of, I'm going to round this to, uh, I'm going to take a few more than three digits of accuracy for the time being, just because this is technically going to be an intermediate calculation. And I don't want to lose any accuracy by rounding off now and then doing more math with this number later. So I'm going to say that my other candidate in between 0 and 8 is the only time when g of t equals 100 within that interval and that's t is approximately I'm not gonna take all the digits of accuracy up here I'm just gonna say 4.9 now <clears throat> how can you figure out which one actually gives the absolute max well if these are the only three candidates and you have a continuous function as the function representing the amount of unprocessed gravel on this plants premises should be you're guaranteed to get an absolute max. It has to happen either here, here, or here. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to compute the amount of unprocessed gravel at uh, t equals 0. And the amount of unprocessed gravel at t equals 0 is going to be, well, the amount that we start with. And that is a given. The plant has 500 tons of unprocessed gravel at the beginning of the workday uh, on site. So 500 tons is what they have at the beginning of the workday. Now at t is approximately 4.9. How much unprocessed gravel is there then? Well, at t equals 4.9, we need to figure out we need to figure out how much uh, gravel has been arrived and processed over the course of the time frame from 0 to 4.9. So we want to figure out what the change in the unprocessed gravel sitting on the plant's premises is between the hours of 0 and 4.9. To find the amount of change, we're going to integrate the rate of change of that function. And the rate of change of that function is given by what I've defined over here to be n of t. 
Right, the rate of change of the amount of gravel, unprocessed gravel in the plant is given by this function. I'm trying to figure out how much change has happened between the hour of 0 and 4.9. So I'm going to do this integral. That's an integral that I can evaluate on the calculator. But that's just going to give how much the amount of unprocessed gravel has changed. The amount of unprocessed gravel is actually going to be what we started with at the beginning of this time frame plus that amount of change. So to figure out what the value of this integral is, I'm going to go back to the calculator. I think I'm going to do this integral from the graph screen, or not from the graph screen, from the home screen. And so if I go back to my home screen here, uh, to, to integrate from the home screen, what we're going to do, and you see all this mess, so if you saw some weird stuff happen with what's over here, it's because I made a mistake. I'm going to get rid of all this and take another attempt at doing this uh, the right way. So <coughs> to do the integral from the home screen, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the math menu. And from the math menu, at the bottom of that list, second from the bottom actually, we have this function integrator feature. And we can numerically integrate a function using the calculator's capability. We're going to have to type in the function. So what we want to do the integral of here is we want to do the integral of n of t. And so n of t is g of t minus 100. So I need to type my function in, g of t, which is 90 plus. And that was actually what I messed up a couple minutes ago. When I typed this in uh, my, on my first attempt, I ended up putting minus there, which, which definitely gave me the wrong result. So I'm glad I kind of double checked what the solution was supposed to be before I posted this video. But anyhow, uh, I guess that should signify the importance of when you are using the calculator, get everything typed in properly. And I just had another little goof there. So there's my g of t, right? And I need to do g of t minus 100. That's what I need within this integral. So there's g of t minus 100. That's the function that I want to integrate. I need to, once I get the function in that I want to integrate on the calculator, give the calculator the variable of integration. Well, the variable I typed into this function was x. So I'm going to integrate with respect to x, another comma. And now I need to give the calculator my lower limit of integration, which is 0, another comma, and then the upper limit of integration. Now I know I have 4.9 right here. But if, if this ends up being my answer, I want to carry three digits of accuracy. And so I'm going to use the full-blown decimal that we got from the calculator a few minutes ago uh, as my upper limit of integration. So 4.923403. And if we close the initial parenthesis that we got, we should get this value. Now that value is definitely not the amount of gra unprocessed gravel on the plant at t equals 4.9. That's the amount of change in the unprocessed gravel between these times. And since that number is positive, that's the amount that the, uh, that's the number of tons that the unprocessed gravel has risen by from t equals 0 to t equals 4.9. The actual amount of unprocessed gravel is going to be this 135 value plus the amount we started with. So if we started with 500 and we've gone up by 135 tons, the amount at 4.9 is going to be 635.376. Six tons of gravel. I am going to carry three digits of accuracy with this because this very well could be my final answer. Uh, that basically lets us rule out this. We know that since this amount is higher than the amount that we started the workday with, we know that the maximum doesn't happen at the beginning of the workday. Maybe the maximum happens at the end of the workday. So if you try to do something similar uh, for the t value of 8, you started out the workday with 500 tons of unprocessed gravel add on to that what the change has been in the amount of unprocessed gravel on the work site from hour 0 to hour 8. So we're going to integrate the rate of change of the amount of unprocessed gravel on the work site. And this is an integral that we can do on the calculator again. And the nice thing about having this on the home screen, if you use the second entry feature, make previous entries reappear, get that to reappear, we do the same integral, right? It's still n of t within our integral. We just want to do our integral from 0 to 8 rather than from 0 to that 4.9 value. So change that upper limit of integration to 8. Uh, this is how much the amount of unprocessed gravel has changed that's on the work site from t equals 0 to t equals 8. So over the course of the workday, the amount of unprocessed gravel has gone up by 25 tons. Uh, but the actual amount of unprocessed gravel at the work site at the end of the workday is going to be, well, let me see if I can do this, that number plus how much we started with, plus 500. So we end up with 525 tons at the end of the workday. I'm not going to bother carrying three digits of accuracy there. 
the maximum amount of unprocessed gravel on the plant happens at T equals uh, 4.923. Oh, didn't mean to cross that out. T equals 4.923, and it happens to be 635 tons of unprocessed gravel.